What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about one thing that I just think has completely ruined NBA 2K19, my team, and also why I think 2K, they obviously know about it, and why I think they're not going to fix it, and they don't want to fix it. And that is overall glitching, overall cheesing, whatever you guys want to call it, but it's in the game, and to be honest, like, to an extent a lot of the time I do it, but not to the extent that you'll see a lot of people doing it. Um, in general on my team unlimited so basically what overall glitching cheesing whatever you want to call it is is for example this squad here 99 overall with a lot of diamonds a lot of amethyst cards and stuff and you want to play against weaker competition these two guys basically matches overalls they match 99 overall teams with 99 overall teams in general and also they match under 99s with under 99s and that's the kind of general rule of thumb with matchmaking and it's the way it normally is but if I do this, if I sub in Isaac Bonga, if I sub in Melvin Frazier, and I sub in centers, Luke Corners, and then I give every single minute, or I take all the minutes from my Pink Diamonds, so I take, give Julius Irving no minutes, I give Rick Barry no minutes, I give Hakeem no minutes, suddenly I'm a 96 overall. If I give all of my minutes to Luke Cornish, if I give Melvin Frazier every single minute, that is not enough minutes left. Let's take the minutes from McDaniel, from Kawhi, and Gordon Hayward. So all my highest overall players are playing no minutes. If I suddenly give Bonga all the minutes, Frazier all the minutes, and then, I don't know, just give McDaniels, or Campy Russell's a Ruby, give him all the minutes. And yeah, suddenly this team is now a 76 overall. From a 99 overall, this team is pink diamond, di four pink diamonds and a diamond, and a solid enough bench. I can make this better though. Even if I put in, say, diamond here, another diamond, Actually, I don't have anything better than that, but basically, I can go with an almost all pink diamond lineup, but if I put the three worst cards in the game on the bench and give them 48 minutes a game, suddenly my overall is much, much lower. And to be honest, what I've figured, what I felt is that normally I say that a team's overall rating is a placebo effect, but it's becoming more and more prevalent that it seems like the lower your team overall actually is, the better the team will perform. As it may be placebo, it may just be the way I feel, and there are also a few just kind of crazy things that I think have just completely ruined the game. So this is another thing that's really common. You will see just a ton of bronzes being used. You'll see someone, obviously they'll be using, picking the bronzes better than I have, and you're gonna see an all pink diamond lineup or almost all pink diamond lineup, and you'll see like 61 overall, or sometimes even lower. Like, there's a lot of the times that you'll go and see um, 50, 58 overall lineups, things like that. And yeah, so like 61, 62 overall. That just means there's no bench. And players will use their bench for the entire game. And there's just some crazy, crazy things that happen. And thank God I got a game showing it. And it's just one crazy thing about overall cheesing is that surprisingly enough, it's not what you think. Like you normally you'll think, oh, they'll build up a big enough lead and then they'll be able to uh, kind of hold it off even with low stamina. It's the opposite. When players with these type of badges have get low stamina, it makes no difference. If anything, it boosts their shot ratings. When players have got the Hall of Fame tireless scorer badge, which an awful lot of players do. So I'm just looking at my pink diamonds. Tireless scorer, he has tireless scorer. I Danless probably doesn't. No, he doesn't. And Gordon Hayward may have it. Yeah, it's one of the most common Hall of Fame badges. And it says here, a player can spend a good deal of energy without losing effectiveness when attempting to score. All this is basically on this badge especially, has meant that if you have Gatorade symbol, to an, sometimes you actually shoot better. You guys, you're not gonna see it too much in this gameplay that I'm gonna show the highlights of because this is kind of a minor example of it happening, but I've had games against overall cheesers using five players where I've been up 18, 19 points at halftime and lost because they hit everything with Gatorade Symbol. Gatorade Symbol doesn't do anything when a card is Hall of Fame tired of score. And a lot of the time, when you're coming up against these type of squads, every player in them does have that badge. And also, every decent player has this as well. They have the personality badge, um, Clutch Performer. So the Clutch Performer personality badge hits clutch shots when games on the line. So essentially, with tireless score and clutch performer, it means that stamina is absolutely irrelevant on offense. And if anything, these high rated players perform better down the stretch 
even than, well, than other players with um, high stamina. So for example, if I try to use a budget squad, something like this here, if I try to use a squad like this, I might actually be able to compete with a overall cheesing squad for most of the game. But even if I manage my stamina perfectly, all of a sudden it goes into the game. It goes into the crunch time, and even with all their players in Gatorade symbol, my players on full stamina, they've got a whole team of guys with Hall of Fame tire to score, they got a whole team of guys with clutch performer, and then badges kick in. And so it means that they're actually, to an extent, at an advantage by not making a sub for the entire game over someone trying to manage stamina. Managing stamina has become sometimes a disadvantage in this game, which is something that's become ridiculous, and it's made budget squads basically useless. So now I'm going to go over the highlights of a game that I played against the guy who was overall cheesing, explain kind of the ins and outs of the game, and also explain why I think 2K are not fixing this, and why I think it's 2K, well for 2K especially, that overall cheesing is a good thing for them making money on my team. So in this game we came up against an overall cheeser with an incredible lineup using a relatively budget squad, around 50k. And one thing that I've noticed, especially with against squads like this, is that the start of the game is normally even. You can normally hang with teams like this because it feels like there's no sort of algorithm going for them. The bad, the Hall of Fame badges haven't kicked in yet, and it's just the game. If you guys watch a lot of the games that I play against overall cheesers, if you watch any of my, I've gone 12 and 0 with this budget squad, I come up against a ton of overall cheesers, and in general, the games always go the same. At the start of the game, it's very even. I may go down a little bit, and then I tend to do. I tend to pull away. Normally, I have a 10 plus point lead by halftime because when Gatorade symbol um, comes on, when that starts flashing in the first half, it seems to have a massive negative effect on a lot of players. What I do against overall cheesers is I do try to uh, lower the stamina. I try to full core press them, stuff like that, and then obviously um, they're going to get tired a lot quicker. And to start this game, just like it's the start of every game um, when you're playing against an overall cheeser, it just seems like it's just going the normal way. It seems like the game is going both ways. You're getting some things going for you while your opponent, obviously, who's got incredible cards, is getting a lot going for them. But at this stage in the game here was when his players started to actually get kind of low on stamina in the first half. And I felt like I was a little bit in control of the game. We were getting a couple of steals, we were getting a couple of stops, and we actually hit a massive shot here with Austin Carr to give us an eight point lead at halftime. But again, I knew I was not comfortable. In this should be a situation where you should be comfortable. You should be comfortable. How this isn't a heavy contest, I don't know, but apparently it's only light. But if you've got a lead late in the game against a team with low stamina, you know you should win it. But all of a sudden, it was like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. We were missing layups, we were just throwing vault at nowhere, and his players who've been on the court for every minute of the game started hitting everything. Like, how is that not a contest? Like, I still don't get that. But um, yeah, it's just everything started going in for them. His players, and it wasn't the players like Porzingis that he just subbed on at halftime, that would be understandable. But it was the guys like Will Chamberlain and Kurlenko who hadn't subbed off a second in the entire game that were killing me. It was just ridiculous. Those two guys, and look at this. Like, just look at this. Will Chamberlain is out of bounds right here. He is out of bounds. And still, they somehow manage to keep the ball in. And yet, again, like, how this isn't a contest. Not only is this a contest, that's a foul. Probably a flagrant foul there by Jay Williams. He did, like, basically a Zaza on it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, that's just 2k for you. And while at the same time, my players who I'd managed their stamina perfectly could not make a shot. Yes, I kept this game close, but that was from free throws and layups. I could not make a shot. Things like that were happening. Every 50-50 started bouncing towards them. And again, this isn't a contest. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I assume in a normal situ scenario, this is a contest. Clyde rises, there's a player literally on his hip. I go through him. I go through his back as he's releasing the ball. I literally hacked them. It was a hack. And there was no contest. They make the three point shot. But again, like I kept in this game because I was getting dunks. And finally, towards the end of the game, we started to hit a couple of jump shots. But again, that didn't stop him from hitting just some crazy shots. Jimmy Butler, at least, he was um, a player that came on and had high stamina. And this guy was just playing no defense. This guy was barely playing 2K. And yet, he just made every single shot. He shot, I wish I showed the box score at the end of the game. He actually shot 48% in the first half. 
He shot 76% in the second half with half his, with Will Chamberlain and Kirilenko having Gatorade symbol for the vast majority of the second half. And even Jimmy Butler to give him a one point lead. And Jimmy Butler can't shoot mid range shots. And yet he hits it, but thank God this guy just stopped playing. Basically, just stopped playing defense to give me a chance to win the game. So honestly, this was a game against a bad opponent who played no defense, but stayed in a game because basically the algorithm let him with low stamina hit every single shot. And that happens pretty much every single time that you play as an overall cheeser, and it's extremely frustrating. So yeah, that's my little rant about overall cheesing over. So now I'm going to quickly tell you guys why 2K won't change it and why I think it will be in the game in 2K in 20, 21, 22, is that 2K have now started matching by overalls. And if you're using an all pink diamond lineup and you only came up against other all pink diamond lineups, you might think, oh, let's use a budget squad so you can come up against other budget squads. But what overall cheesing allows people to do is they are, it allows them to use the pink diamond cards, the cards that people spend money on, the cards that bring people, well, make people buy packs. It allows you to use those type of cards against lower opposition and completely dominate. It means that there's a lot of people thinking, okay, there's actually a point to me using pink diamonds because now there's a way I can use those type of cards and use them against people who are using emeralds, using gold, using much lower rate players and dominate, which is something that while kind of a little bit frustrating, is something that I'm not going to discourage people from doing because sure, it's in the game, why not do it? It's something that it's obvious 2K know about and it's, in my opinion, the only reason that 2K have kept overall cheesing in the game. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.